Hi, I'm Tim. Welcome to Watchbox and thanks for logging on. The weekend has arrived and so have the watches. Team also at thewatchbox.com to purchase anything you see here on the show. We get quite a response, so reach out to me directly. Prices, sales, accessories, trade proposals, you got it. Team also at thewatchbox.com. All names, prices, and references are in the description below. Let's jump straight in. Let's start big. Patek Philippe, 5078P, minute repeater. 38 millimeters in platinum. The timepiece features the telltale top Vesselton diamond between the lugs down at six o'clock. The 38 millimeter case featuring exquisite welded lug profiles. So this case made in pieces and then assembled and hand finished. The dial, which debuted on this model in 2008, is rich and lustrous black lacquer, and you can see all white calibrations with white varnished hands. Now the timepiece features an extraordinary caliber R27 micro rotor that is an automatic winder and a minute repeater. Note the use of black polished repeater hammers and gongs. It has a 22 karat gold guilloche cut winding mass, 43 to 48 hour power reserve, 21.6 beat rate, and we'll see if we can show you the balance, which is a gyromax style. So Patek Philippe's signature free sprung architecture. Also note the size of the bevels. So broad you can see and appreciate them without the assistance of a loop. Now we're gonna fire this one up. If you really want to impress with the minute repeater, you want to turn it to 1259 and then fire it up. I'm going to do my best to get it without overshooting. Let's hope I didn't undershoot there. All right. Beautifully executed and it wears just as nice on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist. This one is relatively compact, recommended for a wrist as small as 13 centimeters circumference. It's the ultimate traditionally sized men's dress complication with a sporty two-tone that makes it fairly sports casual. You could absolutely wear this watch with short sleeves and short pants. And as you can see, being a three-hander, it's clean. It's clear, it's crisp, it easily ducks underneath the cuff. It's an unassuming monster complication of a watch. And I should also mention the timepiece discontinued is a surefire collectible for the future as Patek would make at most eight to 12 of these in any given year. From Patek Philippe, we jump to IWC. This is a timepiece that represents the absolute best of IWC innovation, as this is the original 1993 to 1995 Doppel Chronograph 3711. This is the 3711-15, with a split-second complication devised by watchmaker Richard Hobring during his time with IWC. It was the first ever series production and durable split-second chronograph, as previously they had been both fragile and generally commissioned pieces. The timepiece is 42 millimeters in yellow gold with its original factory black gloss tritium dial what sets this model apart from the standard steel variants not just the black gloss lacquer of the dial or the gilt style golden printing but the applique numerals and indices on the dial as you can see the dial and the hands are matching tritium and the watch features its original IWC fish crown underneath the case back and this is not just a double chronograph this is the double chronograph the double powered by a caliber 79230 IWC's reworking of the value 7750 so many changes to the power source, the regulator, the train, and of course the addition of the hovering split second complication, making this effectively IWC's own movement. And it's matched with lovely metallic golden discs for the day and the date with quick sets for both. Now being 42 millimeters, it is more wearable than later IWC pilots complications. And you can see this one is anachronistically and deliciously hallmarked on the case flank. And the hallmarks are pre-1995. So this is one of the earliest examples of that already rare 93 to 95 run most of those were steel, and the vast majority were built later on as the watch gained a little bit of traction. So this is an extraordinary collector's piece in wonderful condition with all of its original factory tritium and its full and voluminous metal still present as it's been rarely, if ever, refinished. Sticking with our high comp, Let's talk about a complication without any parallel. When this launched in 2007, the Jugere Le Coult Duomet was an original, taking the architecture of an 1880s 
minute repeating chronometer from the JLC Heritage Gallery Museum and transposing that double mainspring barrel, double drivetrain system into a wristwatch format. This is the caliber 380 and it's the highlight of ownership. As you can see, twin mainspring barrels, each one with a lovely pocket watch style ratchet. So while one winds, the other ratchets freely. The movement has a 50 hour power reserve times two beaten away at 21.6 with a free sprung balance architecture. And you can see the mono pusher column wheel in action as well as the recentering hammers at center. It's built like a longa movement with Cote de Soleil sunburst radiating out from the escapement and the balance. And then you can see German silver, that nickel copper zinc material used on longa movements is used here. Now, of course, it's a mono pusher chronograph. It is a foutrillant, but I should also mention there's just one escapement and it acts as a traffic cop, turning the two powertrains on and off alternately. So when you activate this chronograph, there is zero loss of amplitude. And moreover, because you double the power when you double the drain, there is also no loss of power reserve, a unique proposition among chronographs. Now this model is the rarely seen platinum example with the ruthenium grained dial and the ruthenium coated grained dial featuring both the time, which is over on the left, and the chronograph functions with coaxial minutes and hours and then a single digits minute disc. You have the one sixth of a second foutrillant and then you have the two separate power reserves, one for the time and one for the chronograph with two center seconds, one for the time, one for the chronograph. Later Duomet would come with simple pin buckles, but this was a flagship complication in 2007, and the first chronograph models came with full clasps. The case is beautifully made with welded lug profiles and double finish, so the lugs are black polished, but the case band is in satin. I owned the white gold model for four years. It remains my dream watch. I loved every minute, and while I eventually passed it on to another collector to enjoy, we actually stay in touch. That's how much this watch meant to me. Easy to wear, but substantial. It's about 13 and a half millimeters thick and about 50 millimeters from lug to lug, all in platinum with a substantial case size. This is an impressive watch, even eyes closed. You know you're wearing something special. Let's talk about a hallowed brand, Blancpain of Les Brassus. They are the other haute de gamme sports watch maker in Les Brassus. We need not mention the first, but in 2014, Blancpain one-upped its illustrious neighbor with this, the 50 Fathoms Bathyscaphe Chronograph, which 43.6 millimeters in steel actually belies the complexity that lies within this watch. Turned it all over and this was probably the most interesting new movement that arrived in 2014. Caliber F385, 50 hour power reserve, 36,000 vibration per hour beat rate, like an El Primero. It features hacking seconds, something most Blancpain chronograph movements do not have. It is also standard from the factory, a flyback chronograph. So it's high beat, flyback, hacking seconds, quick set date, 50 hour power reserve, beautifully hand finished. It's also blessed with another feature you don't see on other Blancpain chronographs based on Frédéric Piguet architectures. It has a full balance bridge and it's free sprung, not one both, making it very shock resistant. And there is an anti-magnetic silicon hairspring. Now, if you take a quick look, you can see the wheels driving the mechanism are actually cut out to look like the spokes of a Lamborghini Aventador. And this was a subtle nod to the relationship over 10 years between Blancpain and Lamborghini. And this one I can actually endorse. It is both vertical clutch and column wheel. You can see the column wheel in action. The vertical clutch ensures that you can leave the chronograph running full time. And it also starts without any stagger or jump. The bezel is exemplary with a ceramic insert. Let's hear it. That's no nonsense. That'll rival the best from Panerai and Doxa, which I consider to be the standards in bezel feel. As you can see, the case is simple. It has a no-guard profile, as the bathyscaphe has always been vintage-inspired. Among the 250 Fathoms, this one feels more like an authentic vintage timepiece in all respects except outright size, of course, and technical sophistication. The finishing is also a step above. Let's zoom out real quick so you can see the watch on my wrist, and it is exceptionally comfortable and relatively short across the wrist. So even if you've got that 14 centimeters circumference wrist, you're going to find this 300 meter diver wears quite well. And again, if you get real close to the movement, you can see that the standard of finish here is world class with huge mirrored chamfers and a lovely spiral graining across the bridges. You'll also note that all screw heads are black polished and there's a double finished gold winding mess. You can even see another one of those Aventador spoked wheels lying below the bridges. Truly beautiful inside and out. Okay, let's stick with our sports watch theme here, but let's go to the top of the market. 
Vacheron Constantin wasn't known as a sports watchmaker as late as 1996 when the first overseas arrived, but the three generations of the overseas, culminating with the watch you see here, the Generation 3 Chronograph, have made Vacheron a force to be reckoned with in that market. 42.5 millimeters in stainless steel, this watch features the crowd-pleasing blue dial. You can see it's handsome, it's relatively flush and flat, as it's an integrated chronograph compared to the modular system used on the Royal Oak Offshores, and this is a Royal Oak Offshore offshore rival in every regard. Anti-magnetic to 25,000 ampere per meter and 150 meters resistant. This is a vertical clutch column wheel manufacture movement inside a bracelet that might be the best you can buy in the high-end sports watch stakes as each side features a pull-out micro adjustment. You can see that on both sides. Every single individual link is removable so you'll get the right size. The watch comes with two straps, one leather, one rubber, both in blue to match the dial, and that blue dial, as I've often said, looks an awful like a certain blue chronometer that shall remain nameless. Now there's a quick release system so you can rapidly denude the watch of its strap and swap in those alternates. The movement, automatic winding, 54 hour power reserve, Geneva hallmark, and you can see it is beautifully executed. For the first time, a Vacheron Overseas has a display case back and a manufactured chronograph movement. It is worthwhile. It's anti-magnetic by virtue of an encircling paramagnetic ring of iron. Truly impressive. You can see the Geneva hallmark applies to the entire watch, not just the movement. Now let's talk about a watch that represents a more accessible take on full bracelet sports watch architecture. This is the 2018 42 millimeter Omega Seamaster Diver 300 meter. Blue ceramic insert in the bezel, wonderful bezel feel and sound. The watch now features a matching blue ceramic dial, still 300 meters water resistant, includes the helium escape valve, which can now be opened underwater before it could not. The date moves down to six o'clock. The case is a little bit larger, but it's inside the clasp that we see the biggest functional differences as the long time fold out dive extension is joined by a slider that gives you 9.6 millimeters of incremental adjustment. You'll also note the use of a half link, so you will get the proper size. Half links on both sides, the slider, the fold out, and of course, the timepiece, beautifully made and distinctive. It's no broader across the wrist than the old model, thanks to new pivoted end links in the bracelet. And if we want to go inside, you can see that there is now a 55 hour power reserve, caliber 8800, coaxial, master chronometer, anti magnetic with a silicon hairspring with a full balance bridge and a free sprung index. That extended power reserve protected down to 300 meters thanks to the case. It remains a ISO 6425 compliant diver and it's part of the Seamaster professional line of true dive watches. You can see this one's exceptionally fresh with its original packing stickers. The original owner of this watch did not enjoy it nearly enough. Don't make that mistake. This is a great opportunity to get a watch that's virtually new. A great looking piece on a 16 centimeter circumference wrist and under 14 millimeters thick. But now, let's say you're shooting for an even more accessible price point, but you don't want to compromise in style. Well, the Bell & Ross BR05 might be your ticket. A combination of an integrated aesthetic with a steel case, a 100 meter water resistance, and as you can see, a spectacular sunburst metallic dial. The applique tri-Arabic numerals and indices give this watch an appealing and upscale ambiance, just as the aligned bolts on the bezel give it an, I would say, air de famille relative to some particularly well-known high-end sports watches. There's no mistaking the Gerald Genta inspiration, and yes, they are copying a Nautilus and a Royal Oak look, but given the price point, less than a few links in a jumbo bracelet, you gotta love what you're getting. Automatic winding with a 42-hour power reserve, a quick set, and a hacking seconds function. This watch is highly wearable, extremely comfortable, stylish, and thoughtfully designed, as the proportions are just about perfect. The use of satin and polish is superb for the class. The watch looks more expensive than it is. It almost reads as a watch a class above where it's priced, and that's mission accomplished for any luxury watch manufacturer. Plus, if you do happen to own an Aquanaut, a Nautilus, a Royal Oak, and overseas, this is a watch you can take into harm's way on vacation, out for a ride, rough and tumble. Again, it's not as vulnerable as those high-end watches, but it's just as nicely made as you can see GNF Chatelain. Chanel's case company builds the case and builds it beautifully, and the straps are fixed to the case using screws and bars, Panerai style, old school Panerai style, to give it a handsome look, but also security that you will not get with spring bar assembly.
Now jump into a slightly higher price point, we have one of the most interesting watches of last year. This is the Glasuta Original CQ from the Specialist line, a timepiece designed to evoke the RPTS 200 of the 1960s, an old school German dive watch, and this watch is easily wearable. At 39.5 millimeters, it's in the same size class as the watch we just saw, but it's got a completely different look. Rotating bezel, let's hear the ratchet. It also has a vintage aesthetic, as there is a sort of fotina on the dial that refers to the original. You can line up the index of the bezel with the minute hand, which is broad arrow style for quick impromptu, zero to 60 minute timer. And of course, the timepiece featuring a lovely domed sapphire to evoke the plexiglass of antiquity. The bracelet is substantial and it feels expensive. It feels as expensive as a Rolex bracelet, but it includes a refinement that you will not find on many Rolex watches. And that is a hidden push button slider built into the clasp, and I'll show you that to good effect. You can see there's a rack and a lock internally. The timepiece is comfortable on the wrist and it's powered by the Caliber 39, which is a 40 hour automatic manufacturer movement, nicely made. The watch is reasonably slender, and as you can see, it sits low on the wrist. So if you don't like the larger watches, the 43 plus CQ, this might be the perfect watch for you as it's vintage inspired with its no guard profile and its evocative dial, but at the same time, it's a 200 meter ISO 6425 diver, so it will get Get the job done. The sizing and the clasp is the icing on the cake, and if you want to take a quick look at the case back, it's handsome, well-made Saxon watchmaking, albeit under a case back that shows you the imagery of the Trident, the Glasuta Original logo, and a combination of satination, media blasting, and polished. Rest assured, it is a manufacturer movement in there, and it's a good one. Breguet, we don't feature you often enough on this show, and today's Marine 5817 represents the best of Breguet. This is the old pre-2018 Marine, a model launched in 2004. Uh, the 5817 in steel is 39 millimeters under 12 millimeters thick, beautifully handmade inside and out, and it's the alternative to the common sports watch, as no one in your office is going to sport one of these. Let's throw it on the wrist real quick, and then we'll talk about the tech and the spec. The timepiece is easy to wear. The lugs are strong, and as you can see, the the strap from Breguet is integrated into the case flying, so it's all of a piece with no daylight showing between the case and the strap. It is comfortable. It has a lovely pyramid-style embossed pattern externally, and it's natural vulcanized rubber, so it has a wonderful silky feel. You'll note that the strap is held on by screw-fixed bars. I've already sung the praises of that assembly method, and it works well here. An expensive watch deserves security on the wrist, and this watch gives it to you. Now jumping to the back side, you can see that Breguet spares no expenses with its watches and you get a lovely wave motif set of steel strap minders rather than rubber. The clasp itself is steel, and as you can see, it too features a wave motif in its profile. Combination of satin and polish rolling around to the crown guard side. We see that wave motif again. Of course, Breguet was the watchmaker to the French Navy during the Royal Era, and thus we have the Marine and the Breguet motto, Horloger de la Marine, of course. The Horloger is Breguet, albeit the historic Breguet company. In the Swatch era, there have been investments in making the watches richer than they ever were in the lifetime of Abraham Louis and his sons. And that starts with the dial here, which is real rose lathe guilloche. So it's cut on a rose lathe, and it's executed by Guilloche, who is a manual artisan who programs this cam-driven engine to create the pattern you see here that's first freehand driven before it's etched. Now it gets better because the dial is made of solid gold underneath a silver galvanized covering. So this is a solid gold guilloche dial. You can also see that the individual Roman numerals are actually fired steel. They are blued and applique loomed minutes and hour hand, and you can see there is a grand dot or a large date down at six o'clock, and there is a quick set system for cycling that oversized date display. The watch is 100 meters water resistant, and if you turn it all over, you can see that the caliber 517, which is based on the Blancpain twin barrel, 1150 Frédéric Piguet, but it features another beautifully guilloche cut component, the spiral shell motif rotor itself, which is handsomely handmade, and you can see the twin mainspring barrels providing 65 hours of power reserve, and a nicely made movement with handsome anglage, rich Cote de Genève, the guilloche rotor, the black polished screws, and engine turning on the base plate, all of which is to say it is internally artisanal, even as it is externally artisanal with the cold rolled steel case flank and that guilloche cut dial. A lovely piece, very comfortable, and it wears larger than it is. Think of it more as a 42 on the wrist. 
Now we mentioned that other sports watchmaker in Le Brasseux, and of course Audemars Piguet needs no introduction, but this is the watch everyone asks me if I can get. It's not the latest thing, far from it. Made from 2007 to 2011, the 15300 has become a cult watch. The original 39mm, but with a more durable bracelet and clasp than the Jumbo. It's also a more substantial watch with a more modern, technically advanced, and tougher movement, but the same general aesthetic such that at a glance you can't immediately differentiate it from the Jumbo. Now one thing that sets it apart is the screw down crown, which in conjunction with the 50 meter water resistance makes this watch swimmable. I do not recommend people swim with a jumbo. The quality of the bracelet finish is why you buy a Royal Oak. The dial is cut on a pantograph, a 19th century mimicry engine, but the bracelet and case, which take between 10 and 15 hours to finish, if you include the case with the bracelet, the bracelet's 10 by itself. This is where the money goes. You can see that flaring bevel that expands over the lug hoods and aligns perfectly across the shoulders of the links. The taper is obvious to the eye and you cannot feel the step down of each individual link. Now the clasp, as I mentioned, is more rugged than what you'll find on the Jumbo, better suited to an offshore than a dress watch, and the timepiece featuring a silver tapisserie dial, the best match to the 15300's white date disc, as they appear to be monotone, whereas on the other models the contrast is obvious. White gold hands, indices, and AP logo, there is loom, flip it all over, and you have the Audemars Piguet manufactured caliber 3120. Whereas the standard Jumbo has a 40 hour power reserve, this has a 60 hour power reserve. It also features a full balance bridge and a free spring index for shock resistance, and two features the Jumbo doesn't have, hacking seconds and a quick set date. You'll also see that the movement is physically quite attractive with the 22 karat gold winding mass. Let's see if I can get a better image of it, including the coats of arms of the Piguet and Audemars families, dedicated to reminding you that Audemars Piguet is the oldest Swiss manufacturer still in the hands of the founding families and indeed still run by the founding families. Audemars Piguet is my <sighs> guilty pleasure. I have to admit that while I sing the praises of other brands, there is a part of me that will always be in love with AP, and that means loving the Royal Oak, or at least picking one version of the Royal Oak to love, and this might be it for me. Perfect on a smaller wrist, it wears better than the near offshore 41 millimeter successor. But if we speak of sports watches, gotta mention Rolex, and the Rolex Submariner has been an icon since 1953. If Rolex is the transcendent name, the household name, the best known name in watches, and the first name in watches, then its most distinctive watch, and thus the best known watch in the world, the Rolex Submariner. But from 2003 till 2010, it took on a very different look with the first ever use of a green bezel. The anniversary Submariner celebrating 50 years of Rolex's most famous watch, the LV, or Lunette Vert as it's known, is better known affectionately as the Kermit. Now you can see it's not just the Lunette Vert, there's also the larger index dial. And this is where a lot of people trying to create a Franken watch version go astray because it's not a standard Submariner dial from the period. No, this is a 16610 with a big yacht master style plots of loom. As a result, the watch lights on or lights off is visibly different from its common 16610 brethren. Now this is a V model from right about the end of the line, meaning you get solid end links and the bracelet itself is still relatively tight sharp. It feels as good as the day it left Geneva. It has the old style stamped clasp, no doubt, but with the solid end links, the more modern construction, and of course the fact that every version of the Kermit featured solid lugs. The timepiece does feel like a transitional model between the way the sub was and the way the sub is. It's also important to note that if anyone claims to have a Kermit with perforated lugs, they either have a Rolex factory prototype or, more likely, they're lying. As the early press photos in 2003 did show perforated lugs, but from my understanding, no example of the like ever shipped. And if you want to play the game, of course, you can research all of the distinctions that make this bezel and this dial one of the last examples as there are subtle changes through the line. 
That 300 meter diver gives way to a bit of a cult watch. The 100 meter water resistant GMT Master II Green Arrow Green GMT Master Script, but it is the black bezel that sets this model apart. With the super case and 40 millimeters, the watch looks large. You can already see that compared to the five digit sub, but if you can wear one, you can wear the other. And this GMT is a lovely and understated, non cola inspired pilot's timepiece. It's not a Pepsi, it's not a root beer, it's not a Coke, and thank God for that because this is a classic Rolex look. The black dial, the black bezel, a watch that's comfortable, two-tone in the right fashion for most enthusiasts, black and silver, and of course being only about 12 millimeters thick, it's nice and flat on the wrist, easily fitting underneath the cuff. Ceramic bezel with platinum fill for the numerals and the indices, you better believe it, and as with the sub, a 48-hour power reserve and chronometer certified Rolex manufacturer movement, a comfortable watch, a handsome watch, and lately since its discontinuation at the beginning of last year, a much sought commodity as a lot of folks are seeking more discretion in their GMT as everyone clamors for Batman and Pepsi. This is a timepiece that is slowly emerging as a modern day Rolex classic. You can see it wears well on the wrist, but it does have more wrist presence because the black dial continues seamlessly into the black bezel, creating the impression of a 42 or even a 43 millimeter watch. Steel is real, and you can have it on your dress watch. In 2015, F.P. Journe launched a series of five watches, 38 examples of each, made in steel as the send-off to the original 38mm case, which was discontinued following that year. And this model, the Octa Calendrier, was revived from retirement as it was discontinued in 2014. It was brought back for these 38 steel examples in 2015. And there are differences. Not only is the watch 38mm, but contrary to the previous examples, the dial, including the day and the month disc, entirely printed in blue, a lovely nuance that sets this late series apart from those that came before. Now the watch is beautiful as you can see it features steel on the outside and gold on the inside. The 38 millimeter case size is perfect and the movement is the latest tech and spec. It's the unidirectional winding 1300 and though rated for 120 hours officially it will run for 160. It's adjusted in five positions like a chronometer and not only is the movement solid gold but the rotor itself which is cut on a rose lathe is 22 carat for grading winding efficiency. The timepiece is very special. As an annual calendar it need be adjusted only once a year during the jump from February to March but it has a lovely and I must say quite dynamic method of conveying the date as it is a retrograde. FP Journe does not make many retrograding timepieces, so in addition to being a lovely annual calendar complication, this retrograde date is a little piece of action on your wrist. Retrograde is often associated with Gerald Genta or Vacheron Constantin, but to get that with a long power reserve, a limited edition, a steel case, a discontinued size, and of course a very special dial, it is the icing on an already rich cake. Let's throw it on the wrist real quick. The watch is unusual in that it includes a deployant clasp. Most Journe watches, even platinum complications, include steel pin, or I should say platinum pin buckles. This one's special because not only does it have a folding clasp, but it is a matching steel folding clasp. If you want to collect the Ossier 5, or I should say the Sank Ossier, you need to start with one, add a second, and work your way up to five. This is a timepiece that represents arguably the F.P. Journe dress watch, arguably the F.P. Journe manual wind. While he loves the chronomet bleu, his original proposal for the most accurate manual wind watch he could create was what you see here. Launched in 2005, this is the chronomet souverain. 38 millimeters in stainless steel. This example features the same refinements you just saw on the calendrier, as it has a blue printed dial, the lovely Clou de Paris center, handsome with a golden tone and blue print, an unusual aesthetic and a lovely one. As you turn the watch over, you can see this one too, a series of 38. I've covered up the serial to protect innocent parties with that lovely caliber 1304 movement featuring twin mainspring barrels, rose gold bridges and plates, but it's the hidden train that makes this watch magical. As you can see the two barrels, which endow a 56 hour power reserve, and you can see the balance beating away at 21,600, but you cannot see the transmission mechanism as the train is hidden under the dial side of the watch. That opens up the valley between the barrels and the balance cock for a second degree of finishing. As you can see, there's a lovely sort of satin strake 
radiating out from under the barrels, and that brushed finish, or I should really call it what it is, machined grooved finish, contrasts with the engine turning underneath the balance, as well as the Cote de Genève across the bridges, satination for all the wheels, black polished screws as you can see, and then a mirrored bevel on the edge of the individual bridges. A great looking watch, this one has the same refinement and the matching stainless steel deploying clasp, throw this on the wrist, We'll zoom out a little bit, maybe that's too close. Throw this on the wrist, the watch is comfy, nicely proportioned. It's only 44.8 millimeters from lug to lug, so it will wear well on a small wrist. Quickly throwing this one upside down again, giving you a quick up close look. You can see how beautifully the watch is designed, not just finished, but the very architecture, the layout of the components is itself a matter of artistry. And that's probably what Jorn does best. He makes great looking watches and then makes beautifully engineered watches. This watch will be more controversial. Launched in 2019, the Audemars Piguet Code 1159 was the most talked about watch of 2019. And in a lot of ways, people jumped the gun. The watch generally doesn't photograph well. So while huge money has been spent on this multifaceted, multi-part case, it's evacuated lugs, it's hexagonal screws, not just for the strap, but for the strap attachment to the buckle, the custom buckle, the custom case components, the dramatic dihedral dipped crystal, and of course a dial in white lacquer with applique rose gold. It does not photograph well unless you get this model. This one solely looks on camera as good as it is in person because the dial depth here is evident in a way it's not on the black and the blue dials. You can see just how deeply dished it is. You can see the gloss of the white, but you can also see the contrast of the numerals and indices against the lacquer base, something you can't see on the darker dials. Look at the case flank and you can see the faceted octagonal form of the mid case designed to evoke the royal oak. The hexagonal screws, again, designed to evoke the royal oak. You have a lovely set of evacuated lugs with beautiful bevels along the flanks, polished flanks on the bezel and the case back, and when you turn it all over, the next generation Audemars Piguet in-house movement. Three-day power reserve, hacking seconds, quick set date, automatic winding. This is caliber 4302. Built in-house and properly sized for the 41 millimeter case. It's a good looking movement. Every bit as handsome as the 3120 we just saw, albeit with longer power reserve and just as much toughness thanks to the free sprung balance and the full balance bridge. This is a watch that is misunderstood in the worst possible way and a great opportunity for the pre-owned buyer as the carrying capacity of the market pretty much names the watch's residual price. You buy it pre-owned, let someone else take the depreciation hit and then you benefit from all of the refinements that went into making this one of the richest and most nuanced watch debuts of the year. A new case, a new dial, a new movement, a new model line and probably the best of the automatics. The white dial rose gold is the one to get. A glorious dress watch under 12 millimeters thick. It sits flushed the wrist while still having an imposing and impressive stance. It's a sporty dress watch, if that makes sense. Oh, Langa, you never disappoint. And in 2014, you gave us a first, your first ever celestial complication. This is the Alanga Unzona Richard Langa Perpetual Calendar Terra Luna. Perpetual calendar dial, note, at the base of the dial, a power reserve indicator for the 14-day manually wound power reserve. You'll note that the dial is made of solid sterling silver with a triple scale known as a Seyfert scale after watchmaker Johann Seyfert. You have the perpetual calendar, you have the extended power reserve, the power reserve indicator, the 45.5 millimeter white gold case, the matching white gold deployment clasp with a trigger system. So like the Longa 31, this one will stay put on the wrist. It's the same clasp. And then you turn it all over and you see where the complexity comes from. With 787 pieces and 80 jewels, this movement featuring a Remontoir de Galate constant force device also includes 24 hour time as there is a 24 hour scale encircling the globe and you can see the denoted time zones but it is a celestial complication in that it shows you the location of the sun relative to the earth the sun is represented by the balance you could see the earth relative to the moon the moon making a circuit every month the moon doesn't just orbit the earth it changes its phase over 29 and a half days and if you were to closely align the physical features of the globe with the 24-hour scale outboard it would act as a 24-hour world time this movement is a monster at 
at 37.3 millimeters in diameter. It is properly sized to suit the case, and with a 14-day power reserve, you can put this watch down, pick it up basically two times a month, and re-energize. But if you owned a watch like this, you would want to operate it, own it, enjoy it, and wear it. And it is an immense white gold hockey puck on the wrist. But you'll note on my 16 centimeter circumference wrist, it fits. It's even comfortable. And it's on one hell of a strap that really pops against the silver of the dial and sets off the red accents, spare though they may be. And the watch can be adjusted so all of the perpetual calendar functions move in step should you fall a few days behind. This is a truly special piece and one of the all time greats power reserve. 14-day power reserve, indicator, perpetual calendar, moon phase, moon location, 24-hour time, and constant force device. This watch should be bigger than it is for all those features. That said, for 15 grand, you can get into a Langa, and you can get into a Langa that anyone can wear. This is the Saxonia Thin, 40 millimeters in white gold with the same solid silver dial featuring white gold cabochon as well as stick indices. The timepiece is only 6.3 millimeters thick as I measure it, and the timepiece being nice and constrained at 46.5 millimeters lug to lug wears well on any wrist. Simple, no nonsense, white gold pin buckle, and a gorgeous movement, caliber 93. Taking a quick look, you can see that all of the same standards of finish are present on this smaller movement. Nothing is compromised. You pay only about $15,000 to own this watch used, but the bevels are as beautiful, the screws are as blue, the black polish is as rich, and the German silver is as intense as on the Terra Luna that we just saw. And this manual wine movement features a substantial three-day power reserve in spite of its size. Throw it on the wrist. This is the ultimate two-hand watch. Simple, elegant, and sliding underneath any cuff man or woman, large or small wrist, any degree of preference for the best, for thin watchmaking, for tradition, for good old German craftsmanship that you don't take on the road, but you take where the car never can go. The boardroom, the bedroom, dinner, the club, this watch is your constant companion, your AMG isn't. A little bit of German engineering that everyone can love and any wrist can fit. Okay, we're nearing the end, but we're not there yet. In 2018, Grubel 4C launched what might be my second favorite Grubel after the Vision 24 Second. This timepiece, the Differentiel, features nothing less than a spherical constant force device, the Differentiel de Galette, as you can see, advertised on the case back of this 33-piece white gold limited edition. 43.8 millimeters in white gold, the timepiece features the distinctive Grubel 4C concave black polished lug profile with welded lug profile as that cleft between the case and the lug is the profile of which I speak. You see double finishing, satin and black polish. These components welded together to create that sharp seam. Full matching white gold deploying clasp and a dial that is extravagantly hand finished with German silver frosted and rhodium plated. The individual scales, like the power reserve, hand engraved out of white gold. And you can see the deadbeat second system that's driven off the one second spring that energizes the differential. Now the watch also features a zero reset hacking seconds. Note that there is a sweep seconds dial as well as a deadbeat second and this stops the balance. The balance, which is inclined to better resist the forces of gravity against the timing precision of the watch, also equipped with an overcoil and free sprung for durability. The mainspring barrel is endowing the watch with 60 hours of power reserve, and when you flip it over, you can see the complex mechanism that underpins that deadbeat second, as well as the zero reset of the deadbeat second. Look at the size of those black polished components. Grubel 4C, if you're wondering, is the highest standard of finish in the industry. Others will match, but none will exceed. You want black polish, interior angles, micrometric machining and detailing. You want a watch with no compromise whatsoever. That's what you get here. A movement that is 9.9 .9 millimeters deep, and you can look deeply into this movement and appreciate it diagonally. This is a timepiece that lets you see into the heart of the differential mechanism with its planetary gears, its energizing spring, and its, its spherical center. Also, if you look, you can see that the bridge for the tourbillon has been entirely black polished, and there is actually a mirrored surface underneath to better reflect it to the eye for your viewing and approval. 
Also take note, this watch is loomed. So while this is a monster watch, it is designed to be used every day and seamlessly. Thanks to Grubel Forcey's lug profile, which is short and tightly downturned, this watch wears easily and comfortable. Don't think of it as a 44, think of it more as a 42 because that's how it wears. Do you want the best? This is it. A constant force device maintaining constant amplitude for 60 hours. This is the best of haute de gamme finish but also precision chronometer grade engineering. What? A three hand finisher? After a Grubel Forcey? Believe it. This is a giant of high horology. Launched in 1994, and this watch, one of 50, has the pre-1994 hallmarks to prove it. One of the first ever, of the first ever, wristwatch Grand et Petit Sonnerie. This is the first Grand et Petit Sonnerie made in a wristwatch format in series. Audemars Piguet launching this boldly into the 1994 watch market, 39 millimeters in yellow gold with a black lacquer dial festooned with golden printing, golden hour cabochon, and hand-placed Breguet Arabic numerals in yellow gold with a wonderful set of three-dimensional vaulted hands unlike the electro-spark etched hands of the present day. The watch is thin too, under 10 millimeters thick, and you can see in profile the settings for silent, petite, and grand. The difference? Silent, nothing happens. Petite sonnerie, the watch will chime the hour on the hour, and then on the quarter, it'll chime just the quarter. If you set it to grand sonnerie, the watch will chime the hour on the hour, the hour and the quarter on every quarter, and the watch on top of everything else is also a quarter repeater on demand. Let's hear. The quarter repeater chimes the hour and the quarters after the hour on demand. So it's a quarter repeater, grand sonnerie, petite sonnerie, and underneath the case back, Audemars Piguet Renault et Papi caliber 2868, immaculately hand finished, lovingly crafted, artisanal to a fault, and hand tuned to create the tone you just heard. It has a 48 hour manual wind power reserve, 50 pieces made. If you want one of the most important high horology watches ever created, you want one of the earliest examples, you want outstanding condition, you want a timepiece that's wearable on a human wrist, that's what this is, the ultimate in high-end watchmaking from the ultimate high-end watchmaker. Guys, reach out to me directly. If you like what you see on the show, reach out to Team Asa with thewatchbox.com. Pricing, sales, additional photos, and accessories. I'll see you there. Time out, Tim out, and thanks for logging on.